Uh, good afternoon. Are you all still here? Already the food has worn out from tea break, I think. Yeah, okay. Okay, uh, the topic of uh, today trying to look at uh, where's our country at, and thank you to uh, KJ John for bringing history into present, and Mr. Ho for acknowledging that there are pains, serious pain. I think that's a good start in working through our issues. Eh? Uh, it's very difficult to find uh, uh, government ministries to say, yes, we have pains and let's look at the pain. I, I think uh, most of us know that Malaysia is not perfect. Which country is? You know, I, no country will ever stand up to say they're perfect. Neither are we. But it, we want to work through that difficulty and challenges. So the starting point is that list. Uh, so I, I, I want to hear the, the other nine at some other forum, uh, the, the pains. But uh, today, just to get on, on the issue of, of minority, I, I want to uh, use this point about acknowledge. First of all, we have to acknowledge that the country has ethnic, religious, linguistic minority. There are minority groups of all sorts. Uh, all of us could be majority in one side, on the other side, you, your language is not respected, your religious belief, the way you speak, your sexuality. So there's a whole list, and I think that's a starting point, no? that uh, different groups, because of their power within a larger society, will have some considerations for, his, uh, for us to, consi uh, to consider. And we need to acknowledge that, uh, that there are minorities in our country. So. Everybody is different, and that needs to be acknowledged. But to understand that, I think uh, Mr. Ho put a challenge to us. We seem to be telling these are the problems, but have we tried to understand what's happening to the other? And I think that's a, that's a good uh, starting point. Uh, Rita mentioned this just now. Uh, I think I'm just putting it up again. Um, and this is what she, she, she read earlier. Uh, this, this is sort of the informal definition still existing. Uh, in the UN and is also guiding her mandate. What's or who is a minority or minorities? A group numerically inferior to the rest of population of a state in a non-dominant position, and this is a very important point. Eh? This group is actually not in that position to negotiate or has that power, and that's where we, we, uh, we need to take consideration. Whose members, being nationals of the state, possess ethnic, religious, linguistic characteristics differing from the rest of the population and show, if only implicitly, a sense of solidarity directed towards preserving their culture, traditions, religion, or language. Which means that everybody has that self-determination to move out, to move to something else, to decide. But if they so decide that this is who I am, this is what I am, this is what I believe, then immediately the protection mechanism uh, must come into being. I'm using this because uh, we are discussing on minority rights this time and we have Rita here. We've not really had a lot of discussion on the issue of minority. And she refers to this document which is in your file, eh? the Declaration on the Rights of Person Belonging to National, Ethnic, Religious, Linguistic Minorities. She says that they spoke about minorities after World War II at the beginning of the UN, but we had to wait to 92. I'm interested to see you well, okay, we, Malaysia, we've waited a long time for many things, you know. We waited for free elections, we are still waiting. So we, we are okay with the wait part. Some are getting more and more angry. <laughs> Some are asking when is the next Bursay 4.0. So, but we, we, we are okay, we will wait, the time will come. My point is, what happened in 1992? This was a General Assembly resolution. Eh? If it's a G General Assembly resolution, then we need to ask the question of where was Malaysia? As I said, Malaysia is an active member and is a member of the uh, General Assembly, very present. And this was a resolution adopted without voting, which means that it got consensus from everybody. And Malaysia was part of that consensus. And I think it's important for us to start this one because I think the sister from Sarawak earlier said that Malaysia is also party to that Declaration on Rights of Indigenous People. So again, we were part of that consensus. Now the question is back home the kampung, what are we doing about it? Eh? So, mean Malaysia is part of the consensus and that's why we are asking our government, hey, this is a standard, can we look, try to integrate that as part of, 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 of our system? And I think the, uh, the four elements that Rita mentioned are, are also written there, the four points. My question is, I don't think 
we need to convince the Malaysian government on minority rights protection. And I'll tell you why. Not because of examples in the country, yeah? of examples overseas. Malaysia has done very well to show its solidarity and passion and compassion for issues outside the country. And all these issues are minority issues. The Palestinian solidarity, rightfully, we need to all be involved. The South Thailand, they facilitate to find in a, a strength for a minority group for years ha have been being dispossessed of the identity in land. The struggle movement, sorry, I, the, the third one is South Philippines, and not two South Thailand mistake. Yeah? The South Philippines, uh, we were part of the negotiation peace process. Another minority group, the Bosnians, do you remember 10, 15 or 20 years ago, so much of help, scholarships, uh, protection for them to come to Malaysia. And now for the Rohingyas, there is compassion. The world is struggling on what to do legally. There is no status for Rohingyas, but Malaysia allowed a grey area to allow them some... I'm saying that the Malaysian government understands minority rights protection, but they do it outside. And this is, this is my biggest... This is my biggest question. If you know what the regime is, do it inside too, because you have the expertise. The Malaysian government understands this concept that minority, minorities need protection. Minority needs facilitation and promotion. So I have great strength to uh, demand the government to use that for all the people in country, whatever affiliation. Uh, we spoke about the Shiite groups. You know, why the sudden outburst against uh, believers who have a different way of, uh, of practicing Islam. Uh, then we heard about the sexual uh, minority, the questions of language, of schools, Tamil schools, financial, uh, Chinese education, recognition. There's a whole list of issues that I think the, the pain, eh? the, the list of pain, we can handle this. We can handle this because we have the expertise to handle minority rights. I don't want to allude that this is symbolic. I think it's not symbolic. Malaysia has consistently said yes to many of these issues. But it's time to take that back home and we must demand this. And I, I don't want to say support for these issues because these are Islamic issues. These are not Islamic issues. These are human rights violation issues. These issues belong to the whole world. Palestine is not a Muslim issue. Palestine is a global human rights violation issue. They've been systematically denied their identity, their place of uh, birth, origin, since time immemorial. It's nothing to do with being Muslim. So that's why they are minoritized in that land because of big power players taking over and countries are going to show that support. We asked for that support in Malaysia. But now com coming home to Malaysia, a little bit of reflection on some of the challenges in terms of ethnic, uh, religious, um, uh, linguistic. I think there are many experts here who, who, who are ta have taken up the issue of uh, vernacular schools. I think maybe they can take the floor and share your own struggle stories later. But I'm always reminded that Malaysia enjoys, I say, a very good support internationally as a government. Um, NGOs, I think Johan knows this, uh, NGOs, when we go to Geneva, we always try to find governments to speak, to bring up the issues very difficult to find support because Johan has already talked to them. And they, it's not, not that, it's because Mal they actually say, Malaysia, your problem, I understand it's, it's real, but oh, yeah, it's not so big an issue, like, you know, compared to another country, yours is quite okay. Then we find, we are suddenly jammed. You can ask Mal many human rights people who go to Geneva, it's really stuck because you're, for us Malaysians, it's not comparing to another country. We feel the pain about our own country. But when you go there, they, each government is thinking, I have one minute to speak which country shall I speak about? And normally, it's not Malaysia, you know? So this is sold as Malaysia. You remember this, right? Tourists come in uh, anywhere in the world. Now you go, when you say, hi, I'm from Malaysia, they sing you the song, Malaysia, truly Asia. So, <laughs> so the promotion of the tourism department, although you may not like Yen Yen, but I think it was successful. <laughs> Maybe it was successful, no? This uh, Malaysia, truly Asia. So imaging, we've got it. We've, got, we've worked out our, our unity, yeah? and I think there are some strengths, but I think we need to unpack. And coming out of the airport, this is what you see. Then this is a cartoon series that I think probably is in your, your bags eh? uh, for reflection and discussion. 
then the the tourists who came from malaysia through the asia suddenly gets confused eh why are they now talking not i am malaysian when we go outside we always malaysian right when we come back home hi i am jeral i am indian i am suddenly you forget your malaysian so a little bit confusing uh, just coming out of the immigration for us eh? so suddenly they said why we suddenly talk about bela india or uh, defend the chinese the malay why the parties uh Uh, uh, structure so a confusion immediately comes uh, come to play we have this we have this this is reality you spoke about the raya and the apa tu uh, open houses today i heard there's open house in jabatan perdana menteri eh? yeah yeah so if you still got time go. no no johan you are eating lunch you're not going you stay here so open houses our culture i think mppj will be organizing chinese new year raya deepavali i mean free food is their way of solving problems in malaysia so <laughs> we are not complaining about the free food part <laughs> that's all right we like the food so all this is acknowledged as our heritage i don't think as we got a case this is this is our beauty we we take it but now we need to go to the pain and the pain is not very very good reminders because you're talking a religious minority this is a small group and i and i like the point uh, i think you made eh kj or somebody said a small group getting loud visibility seems to be getting a traction on national news i don't think this is all malaysians or all muslim a very small group you know and what happened when people want to insult another religion i mean nobody should do it to any any religion once you realize you've done something offensive withdraw apologize and and move away if you have done something so the motive is 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 very uh, so you remember this eh? the 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 protest the uh, cow head protest uh, and for hindus uh, cow is a very sacred animal then we are reminded of of the church burning i don't think anybody here is really interested in burning any buildings you know but using that as a symbol to show might and strength and disrespect for minorities and this is what the message is coming out no it's always trying to posture and how come this has happened and then another small group i call this a small group uh, it is not a big group uh, let me tell you they always will give uh, 200000 500 when bursay they said we will bring out don't know how many how many hundred uh, how many thousands but no one came you know 50 30 uh, well unfortunately a, a, a former statesman a former prime minister is among this this mid so i don't know whether this is concern for the welfare of a community or posturing of an ideology against minority equality rights and this is actually a malayali there oh okay <laughs> kj john's eyes is always very malayali eyes so he said he sees a malayali there so these are our realities uh, uh, in in, uh, in malaysia and i want i only bring this back to say that we have both sides the beautiful malaysia and the not so beautiful malaysia and i think the pain is what we need to address in addressing minority rights this demand and call for for equality should be a common platform standard for all once a nation says that you do not demand you go back to china or the balik china balik china balik india then we are trouble then it's two class citizen malaysia was at the forefront of supporting the fight for south african liberation against apartheid we were one of those countries active We, let's not repeat that kind of fervor or sentiment uh, back in malaysia we see this images right one malaysia we see a lot of uh, of good pictures like this remember i, I maybe the government will you'll have to do one finger once in a while no i won't ask which finger but i know all of us have to do this but my question is that does this mean that we have already ticked the box aku bangsa malaysia as opposed to when you go and fill up a form you have to fill up forms here for phone buying car whatever they'll ask you what race you are so we have to tick so this is the tick box the sun shines on everyone this is a tick box that we have not really created to 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 tick and if this has happened then that one finger makes sense but if you show one finger and then you have 5 6 7 boxes and saba and sarawak have issues eh? there i know she's already smiling why saba and sarawak always go under others before you ask the question i already know eh? yeah so uh and i think uh, this just a slide of challenges i don't think any child is born with the notion of being racist or promoting all children are born equal they believe they play with any children just let them be this is thought 
either taught from parents, grandparents, from images, from community, and the school. The school has a place to, uh, to play. We have enough stories of teachers uh, shouting wrong words, uh, telling Balik China, Balik India, uh, giving ideas of not to uh, join together. We only hear stories of the older generation saying, before I could sit together and eat together, now I cannot. So why is this before was possible, now cannot? Where did this change about? Why in schools we are not uh, helped to ask questions? And this is another part of opening up Malaysia, you know. Uh, is critical thinking, dissent, part of the Malaysian education system? Or is it just a banking method? And I think for a nation to develop, we need to, to, to ask this question. Uh, the challenges, I always tell this story about a child wanting to be a prime minister, uh, a workshop I did before, a workshop with youth of 30, 40 youth. So, I, you know, what's your vision for the future? Everybody did the normal engineer, lawyer. One, one person said, I want to be a prime minister. And then all started laughing. So I was the facilitator, I was a bit jam, what to do? But the child was an Indian child. The rest were laughing because, they, hey, what, you cannot be prime minister. You are. So the guy was, what? why are you laughing at me? And this is the laugh we are all uh, sort of laughing at ourselves. How come? Every child should aspire to, to the highest possible office in the country, no matter what race, religion. Because you're a Malaysian uh, first, okay? I think the civil service issue has been mentioned. I think the history told and untold needs to be handled also. Because the history books cannot be the books of politicians. It must be the books of people's stories. We have painful chapters, May 13, but closing the chapter and hiding the chapter does not mean it's over. We have not come to a closure. Why can't we open and find closure? Like the RCI now in Sabah, the RCI, the Royal Commission Inquiry, that's the way to find closure. It's painful. So many names are throwing out. Politicians are hiding. Mahathir's name is also connected. So, but what to do? You have to uh, unearth the truth in order to find closure. We need to uh, say that this is not allowed anymore. Balik China, Balik India, any politicians or artists, this must be immediately sacked. But the Prime Minister is not sacking anybody. Because, uh, the, I don't know, well, I haven't heard the Prime Minister speak for some time. Maybe he's busy, yeah. <laughs> Uh, common sensitivities, you know. Uh, you, we have sensitivity for, for no pork because of Muslim, but we have no sensitivity for no beef. You go for any function, they just serve. You go to schools, they serve. So, there must be one standard for all. If there is a sensitivity for food, then let's ask. Who can, then we, we'll come find with a common agenda. But if we are not doing it, then we said, okay, there is this kind of food. Please be careful and eat what you want. But there must be one standard. You cannot have two standards and say we are one uh, Malaysia. And this is, I think you mentioned the word Allah, exclusive use of words and its meaning by religious authority. I think it's time to stop allowing religious bodies to dictate a nation that belongs to 30 million people. Huh? Finally, as we come to our independent celebration, uh, that sunshine for all of us, we need to unpack or undo institutionalized race-based discrimination. Stop media that allows perpetuation of racism. And this is Utusan Malaysia and all the mainstream papers that just attack and promote. Uh, how can we allow that? You know, it's definitely a no-go there. Racial profi profiling in law enforcement. There's a lot of questions about shooting and killing. And I think this is perception, eh? Whether data is what Rita was asking, if we can get data, this can be dispelled. But if no data, we will continue. We will continue asking questions. Race-based politics and the affirmative action. I think affirmative action is not a free license to continue uh, di reverse discrimination. It's a need that needs to, to end at a time frame. And I think human rights, you mentioned the uh, general comment 18, plus some other documents qualifies an affirmative action is a very short lifespan and it cannot be extended like the Malaysian NEP extend 10 years, 10 years, 10 years. That cannot be the formula because it will perpetuate racism. Thank you very much. Yeah.